From afar, you can see the cliches. 98,000 tons of diplomacy, four and a half acres of sovereign U.S. territory. But up close. Coming off to now passing heading 260. It's all teamwork. Right 20 degrees. And pride as sailors tireless work. <laughs> gets jets off the deck. RPM. And into the air. You got to watch out for up here. I mean, I keep the head on the float. Stephen Wallace from Louisville, Georgia. Open up on the third wire. Is just one of those on the deck where a sea of colors may just be colors to us. But for the pilots that fly off the Eisenhower, they represent the lifeblood that allows them to do their jobs. Oh, yeah, it's a great job. Pilot Christopher Coates is from Norcross. He flies an F-A-18 Hornet. I mean, you really can't see what we get to do every day flying off the pointed end. Uh, dropping bombs, doing whatever mission we have to do, and then uh, coming back aboard. Although the planes and pilots are the stars of the show, and have a good time. pilots like Christopher are quick to recognize everyone whose job it is to keep them safe in the air. But they go through every day and the long hours they put into it. So there's a lot that goes involved just getting us off the deck. So we probably have the easy job of flying it, but everyone else said goes into fixing our aircraft to get us airborne. And getting airborne takes sailors like Jessica Dixon. I met a lot of people from Georgia. Jessica may be far from her home of Monroe, but she still feels at home in the middle of the ocean. And I think it will be this many people in one spot from Georgia. So that's a good thing, make me feel at home. And what does Jessica miss the most? The food. <laughs> To fuel the USS Eisenhower, it takes two nuclear reactors. But how about the crew? You're talking about 15,000 meals a day, 500 pounds of tomatoes, and 400 pounds of flour. When you walk through the Eisenhower, you get a sense of just how big the ship is. And throughout the ship, from the stem to the stern, starboard to port, sailors smiling while they work. But nobody's smile could compare to Emerson Johnson's. Oh, there's a lot to be proud of, though. Happy to be here. Our country, our God. Camaraderie, the love, what we do. Keep that going. Keep this world safe. I love it. I love it. For Emerson, the love for the Eisenhower and his country is driven by a deeper love at home. I know my kids at home and dad is out here telling business. Make sure they're safe. And what makes his job easier is the appreciation he gets back home. No doubt. What's going on in the world today? They have, I, don't, I can't see them not. The glory may be up on the flight deck, but for the people that work on the 23 other decks who don't fly and who often work 15 to 20 hour days, seven days a week for months at a time, what keeps them motivated? Every day is a different day. Brand new day. Exciting. What we do out here is very repetitious, but it never changes. Always exciting. No jet can take off. No course can be set. Coming off from our rudder is right 20 degrees, no new course given. Without the crew of this ship knowing the exact motion of weather. Here on board the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower, there's a delicately balanced relationship between Mother Nature and machine. A relationship that allows this floating fortress to project U.S. power anywhere in the world. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Dual weather, some good weather or bad weather. But yeah, you're right, absolutely right. Especially for the aviators uh, when, uh, when they do their strike planning. When it comes to carrier operations, naval officers plan every movement around the motions of weather. You can see across the entire ship. Meet Lieutenant Commander Carlo Lombardo. And just like Gene Norman, he's the final word when it comes to a forecast. As you might expect, this office uses a variety of weather tools, weather instruments from the flight deck to radar. Advances in internet and satellite technologies have made forecasting in both the Storm Tracker 46 Weather Center and on the carrier a little easier in recent years. But out here, not without a different kind of challenge. Connectivity, when we lose connectivity, that's a problem. And unlike forecasting ashore, we're a moving platform in a dynamic environment, so our environment is changing even more rapidly than 
your, your environment is yours. Good evening, Nathan. Now, this is Agent 3 Burke from the METOC office with your Event 6 Cyclic Brief. The Meteorology Operations Center, or METOC, provides weather briefings constantly to the pilots. The wind is going to be green, yellow, or red. Carrier green, forecasters green, say in order for the Eisenhower to launch and recover any aircraft, the exact sea and wind conditions must be known. They have to, like, drop into the wind. We're always learning from it. So Navy Pilot learn. Lieutenant Christopher Coase is from Norcross. He understands the significance of weather. His training mission this day took a different turn thanks to cloud cover. Did the weatherman get it right? No, they actually uh, forecasted it correctly. We just, when we rolled in, the weather, the clouds were in front of me and the target, so I couldn't visually acquire the target and be able to drop without going through a cloud layer, which would not be good if I got disoriented, disoriented at that point and not be able to pull out for some reason. For more than 60 years, the aircraft carrier has been a first line of defense for the United States. Uh, winds, I, they just went down, but they're still forecasting. These forecasters understand the importance of their mission. Well, the first thing to remember is that weather is never neutral. It either favors us or it favors the enemy. And our job is to ensure that it always favors us. On board the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower, meteorologist Greg Majewski, CBS 46 News. It's all about training so that uh, you're ready when and if the time is up. So this is the worst case scenario that we're practicing for right now. When there is a fire, all sailors man their battle stations. Come on, come on, let's go. This time, it's a drill. They are trained. Go to it, go to it. To work together. Come on, we gotta turn that fire off. Let's go. And if they use the right technique, you kill yourself on that fire. They can save lives and the ship. Big figure eight. Big figure eight. You have to go with fire. And just one mistake. I died, man. And be deadly. Why don't we have anybody cool in ordnance? All the hoses went out. All the hoses will find the fire. You needed somebody uh, cooling ordnance. You knew that you had two 2,000 pound bombs in here, right? Yeah. All right, nobody was cooling ordnance. That's why you're dead today. It's survival. That's what it is when it comes to something like this. It's survival. Facing adversity. All of our hoses have been taken out. Team two arrives and fights the fire. Which one is fire? Making progress. One step. At a time. Replacing real flames is real motivation. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's work together. They're good. They're good. They're good. That's what they need. They need good motivation. They've got it. And with motivation, what that mean? the leaders of today hope to find the leaders of tomorrow. He was to control that entire scene and ran five, five attack teams. He orchestrated that entire mess. And uh, that was pretty impressive. Pretty impressive young man. <laughs>